Fifth commandment, right? Your body is a gift from God to the world. To you too, right? But you're not alone. You're here in the world. You're one of many of us. And that gift is built of the physical reality that has the spiritual effect of your will, your emotions, and your thoughts. How? I don't know. He's the creator, but here we are. It's really cool. It's, it's it, anthropology or, or what you know, Pope John Paul called the, the theology of the body. That's an awesome thing, man. And we don't have enough of it, period. And uh, certainly as Lutherans, enough respect for it. So your emotions are in all of that, right? As a gift from God through you to the world. Does that make them the revelation of God? That's the question that you asked, okay? Is this body that you've been given by God, including thought, emotion, and will, is it also where God talks or how God talks? Huh? You with me on this? Because people who believe they should base their faith on their feelings believe that God talks to them through their body. Yeah? And I'm going to contend without going any further than like two commandments removed. Hmm? I'm going to contend that that's just not what God has said. Hmm? <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. Uh, so, so which way am I going to go? I mean, if you know Echo at all, you know which direction I'm going. If you know your commandments, you should have a pretty good guess. We're going to go up the chain, past authority, and the design and structure of the universe, and parents, father, mother, but it's not just that. It's, it's all design. Up to this holy that comes when God talks in the third commandment. Normally repeated as remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Yeah. Uh, well, if, if you dig deeper into what that is, Old Testament style, the day of the rest is the day of God's word. Yeah, well, It's the day in which we remember what God has surely said based upon that first seventh day of rest in which he looked upon all that he had done and the goodness of it said, this is good. Yeah. That he had said, let there be light, let there be planets and stars, all, all that. This is good. Yeah. From there, that day of rest has always been a day to recall what God has said. So, the third commandment being knowing that God speaks, because God has said stuff, you know now that he speaks. Which means that if you want to know what God thinks, you don't look to, say, your body or any other part of creation, the trees or the rocks or, you know, the X-Wing fighters in the swamp, you know, you, you go, <laughs> you, you look instead, <coughs> sorry, uh, you look instead to what he's actually said. Well, the, the question a little bit is, well, how do I know what God has said? Yes, that's a very good, unbelieving question. I understand it too. I understand it too. But the thing about that is, if you think about it, it's not, if the almighty God who created the heavens and earth is going to say stuff, don't you think, like, you'd notice? Like, it'd be really, really obvious. Yeah? And, and this is where the whole thing, like, through your feelings, like, tries to make this point. Well, that's why I felt I felt so strong and burning in my bosom, all that. Okay. Good. Good. Um, that's interesting. But I'm, 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 I'm thinking that's sort of weak. Honestly, I think I think that if the almighty eternal God who makes things by the breath of his mouth, who holds it all in the palm of his hand, who knows where the she goat gives birth, or should I should I call it the guy's goat or should I call it the Zay goat? Who knows where goats do stuff on the mountaintops? Huh? Who, who is written every day so that no matter what we do, it cannot collapse and yet allows us to continue to choose our futures. This God, if he's going to do something, I don't think it's just going to be kind of like a warm, fuzzy feeling. 